Hello, welcome to Knitting Pipeline Extra. This is number 18. It is February 2018. And I have quite a bit to show you today. I think I'll be combining the knitting and some, well, some other things <laughs> and then quilting. So below here, I'll put the time when you can expect those different segments. So let's start with knitting, okay? My name is Paula. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Paula. I live in central Illinois. I host the Knitting Pipeline audio podcast, and I generally do in a, in a video, video, to, video episode about once a month or so to try to show you what I've talked about on the audio. So I don't go into as much detail on the projects, so you might want to check those out. Check out the audio if you're interested. I just bumped the table a few times. Excuse me. I know that's tough if you have earbuds in, but I don't have a whole lot of finished projects to show because I'm knitting a sweater and that takes a bit of time. And I have some knitting in the background that will be shown soon. Also, I want to tell you that the little sweater I knitted for my granddaughter turned out so great and it fits her. It's a little big, but that's fine. She'll be able to wear it. And I'll insert some photos of her. She's two and a half. She looks a lot older in these photos to me, but she obviously likes the sweater. And that was, the, of course, that makes me super happy. Okay, so um, by the way, I'm wearing my Brandy Wine by Romy Hill. This is a really old project of mine. I think I've had it at least five or six years, maybe longer, but it is on my project pages if you go down far enough. I don't remember what the yarn is. Actually, I think it's Knit Pick Stroll. I think that's what it is. So, okay, this is the Winter Forest Cowl. I talked about this. It is by Fishhead Creations. I can't think of her name, but that's her, her design name. And I used Shepherd Mill or Shepherd's Mill that I purchased at Rhinebeck. I love doing stranded color work. It seems like it's making a big comeback right now in sweaters and other items. I've always loved it. My first knitting projects were stranded color work. And so that's all I knitted for a long time was just color work patterns. So yeah, this is a worsted slash Erin weight. I did leave out one of the motifs because I felt like this was deep enough, but this is a corrugated rib and is often seen on stranded color work. It's quite densely knit so that when I walk, I can have it up around my face and then I use my other cowls to kind of get it there because we've had really, really cold temperatures here in January and uh, um, in the negative Fahrenheit. So yeah, and we always have wind where I live. So it can be kind of dicey out there. It's a little more moderate today, right around the 32 mark. Although we had several days of rain and we have flash flood warnings and a river flood warning and all that. So that is the Winter Forest Cal by, I think it's just called Winter Forest by Fishhead Creations. This is my Land of Sweets Cal. By Helen Stewart. It was part of the Knit Bent collection. And the, the original one is at least twice the height of this. But I was just using two colors. It's meant to be done with a mini skein set. And a lot of people did that. I didn't have a mini skein set that would <laughs> advent set. I think so there would be 20 I guess 24, 25 colors in there. But I had these two complementary pinks. The Tweety one is Hugh Loco, and I believe the Speckly one is Woolbarn. So they went well together. And I haven't worn this. I think I'm going to give it away. Um, actually, I have a sister who really likes pink, so she'll have to tell me whether she likes it or not. So that is Land of Sweets Cal. And I think I would like to make it again and do the full length one because sometimes this just folds down as really not enough coverage on the neck if it's really cold. So those are the only finished projects I have to show right now because I'm, I've been 
diligently working on this sweater. It is the Lush cardigan. It's just called Lush cardigan tacked on there by Tin Can Knits. And I have just one sleeve left. I'm going to steek it down the front. So maybe I'll just record that when I do the steeking. I do have a video tutorial on steeking or just, it's not really a tutorial. It's more like a demo. And I decided this is the second time I've made this sweater. I like it so much. So I decided on this one that I would speed things up by sticking it down the front. And that is when you cut your knitting, if, if you're new to that term. Uh, this is in Quince & Company Phoebe, which is like a kettle dyed or a tonal. I'm not sure what the proper term is. And I'll talk a little bit more about that sweater. I'm also using my brand new Luca double pointed needles, DPNs. I bought these when we went on the yarn crawl at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. And I got the large set and then my dear friend Angie was with me and she ended up buying the smaller set for me, which is way too generous and extravagant. But I do love these. I've talked about the Lucca needles before. While I'm here, I'll tell you about the DPNs a little bit when I'm thinking about it. These are a size seven and that was part of the large set. And then I have used the fives. These have a band in the middle. It's birch wood is what the uh, main material is, but there's a metal band in the middle. It does have the size on it, but it also, I think the purpose of it is to strengthen the needle, especially if you're a tight knitter. People say, and this doesn't happen to me, but I think it's happened once or twice. I'm not a tight knitter, but you can actually break the smaller sizes if you're a tight knitter. So this metal band in the middle would protect that middle from snapping if that is sometimes what happens to you. They're really smooth. You do feel this once in a while, but it doesn't bother me. I haven't, I thought it might, but as I've used them, I once in a while feel it, but it certainly doesn't bother me when I'm knitting. And I should finish this. I have five inches done on the sleeve and I think I knit the sleeve to 10 and a half inches. So that'll go really quickly and then just have the ribbing and then the button band. I don't have buttons yet. I haven't looked for those. So that is the main project. I also have a pair of socks on the needles, the simple skip socks. <laughs> it looks like Skype, but she says it's skip. And this is the knitting pipeline uh, or the fat squirrel does a commemorative bag for the knitting pipeline retreat. And this one is 2016 and I did purchase the 2018 bag and the 2017 bag. <laughs> so I haven't gotten all of them, but they're so irresistible and I will have to run and get those and get that bag and show it to you because it's, it's pretty cool. So this goes in here. All right. And then I got a pack I ordered actually. The Kindness is Everything shawl by Jala Spiro. I talked about in the last episode and Jala of Knit Circus Yarns has a knit along. <laughs> I got sidetracked there. Um, a knit along going for this. It's a beautiful shawl and I decided to purchase the yarn that was shown in the pattern. So that would be these two, which is, this is the greatest of ease. It has 200 yards and you can see it's a beautiful gradient. And then this is the greatest of ease. And this one is called kindness is everything speckle. This is kindness is everything gradient. So these two are alternated, has stripes, has lace, all the things I love. And I cannot wait to get started. I believe it started February 1st, then it along, but it goes till somewhere in March. And once I get going on this, probably won't even take a week because when I knit, with knit circus yarns, I can't wait to get back to it and it goes super fast. And I'll have to ask Jala, this might be a giveaway because it was in my box. I'll have to ask her, but I think it might be a giveaway for the show. Then she sent me a couple of other patterns in here too. So I'll, I'll find out about those. One of them is Silk Moon Crescent, if you like Crescent. But the Kindness is Everything is a triangle triangular shawl. The Mostly Harmless Hat. And yeah, those were the ones. I also brought a blast from the past here because <laughs> I, I think the whole sock yarn blanket has that uh, mania has died down a little bit, but I did mine some time ago and I actually used 
the directions that are in a blog post by Kelly Shelley, <laughs> Kelly Shelley Kang. It is called just Sakyarn Blanky. I think she was the one. I know she was the one that got this going. The Cozy Memories, that's a knockoff in a way, or a different version. This was the original one, and I thought I'd show it to you. When I first decided I was going to make it, I did solicit for, or I just I don't solicit sounds terrible, but I mean, I asked if anyone had any scraps. And so at one time, I had all these labeled with the person's names on there, people's names, and of course, some of them are mine as well, but I did an i -cord finish on mine and I did it well it's in my project notes you'll have to look way down because this is some time ago but I did it I found that I did it on the wrong side and then it looked better on the right side and I kept the points so I'm going to show you I also did a center double decrease and kept that in stockinette on the, on the right side so let's see so you can see those lines. This is a throw size. And although I have many quilts, I do think that when I when I need a blanket, this is the first one I go for, a uh, knitted blanket. It's just, it's so cozy and I do really enjoy it. So now we will push that to the side. Also, I love the red trim that I put on it. It, it really turned out great. Okay, I'm going to real quick go get what I purchased at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat, so you can see that. Well, I am back. However, I could not find one of the things I'm looking for. I have a new design out. I don't really design all that often, but I have a design by Barocco. It's called Skagen, S-K-A-G-E-N, and I cannot look. <laughs> what I wanted to show you. But anyway, maybe I'll, I can insert it here. It was released in the middle or early January, and it's an asymmetrical triangular shawl in Barocco Remix Light, which I really enjoy. I thoroughly enjoyed knitting with that. It's a cotton, silk, oh, it has all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and it's a great summer yarn. I purchased this at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat in the Vendor Fair. This is the Fat Squirrel bag for 2018 for the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. It has the tag on it, and I didn't think I was going to buy it, but you had me at Bluebirds, so I did get it. Or they're chickadees or something. They look more like chickadees, but they're blue. And as soon as I saw it, I fell down the rabbit hole on that. Then I purchased a really cute... A bag from Mini Moon Sewing, and this is one that has a clear, or clear front, so you can see what's in it, and it's in a kind of a chintz rose fabric. She is a new bag maker located in Decatur, Illinois, and her, she is Mini Moon. Dot Big Cartel. Dot com. Uh, that's M I N N I E Moon. That was her grandmother or great grandmother's name was Minnie Moon. So it's just such a cute name for a business. Her name is Erin and I know her from the Cornerstone, one of the earlier Cornerstone retreats. So that is, those are the two bags I got. And then I purchased self-striping from Diabolical, Rachel of Diabolical. And I've never purchased her yarn before. This is watercolor stripes which is her self-striping and the color is blood orange and it is targi so it's 90 percent superwash targi wool or tarhi however you say it and 10 percent nylon there's 115 grams 430 yards so it's a generous put up it's kind of a i think to me it looks a little bit halloween i sort of went <laughs> i sort of went fall and christmas on my purchases i have no idea why but yeah, I'm excited to start on that. And they actually come in two matching skeins. So when I open this up, it'll be too evenly divided. So I guess they'd be, well, half of 115. And then, so that way you can knit up matching socks. And then she gave me one for giveaway. So you'll be seeing that. And this one is Hidden Tiger. So I'll be giving that away, maybe a little more seasonally so it fits. I purchased her 
Christmas sock. I want to make Danny of Little Bobbins has the her her first pattern that came out. She's doing some more now, but her first pattern, oh Christmas tree, and I wanted to do it at Christmas, but I didn't. And I don't know if this will work because I think it looks better in a solid, but I'll find something for this deck deck the halls, and that's also diabolical. I typically when I buy. Uh, <laughs> at the fair, the vendor fair at Name Pipeline, I tend to buy more from one person and then the next time I'll buy from somebody else instead of a little bit here and there. And I had never bought from Rachel, so. And then this is a little mini skein set that I just loved the colors. And I don't know what I'll do with it, but I like looking at it. So those are my purchases. I think that was all, I per oh, I purchased the Luca DPNs at the Fiber Universe, one of our show sponsors, our retreat sponsors. And then, let's see, Le Mouton Rouge was another retreat sponsor. That's a fabulous shop in Bloomington, Illinois. And then Close Knit in Urbana. That Okay, I think, unless I find my Skagen shawl, it's actually Skagen, but it looks like Skagen. So I'm going to go into needle felting. I have resisted this as long as possible. And I saw the yarn hoarder and her daughter, Heidi, I watched all of their episodes or her episodes. Her daughter, Heidi, demoed and did a, a workshop at our last year's knitting pipeline retreat. I didn't get to do it because I'm kind of busy there, but I, it's been in the back of my mind and Amber showed or she showed some penguins that Heidi had made. It was a kit from Going Gnome and I bought the kit. Here are the penguins I made. Now this is someone who's never done needle felting so I think they turned out pretty good. Of course I've watched people do it so that really helped. This this is so quick. I think I spent maybe no more than two hours, maybe an hour and a half on this one. And since I did the little guy who has a little bit of an attitude, I did him second. It went a little quicker, but I, I enjoyed the process. So my, my goal is to do at least one a month and I want to start doing gnomes, but the gnomes looked a little trickier. Actually, when I bought the penguins, they were an intermediate level kit. So maybe I wouldn't have been, I would have been okay doing the gnomes, but the kit comes in a cylindrical case and it does say intermediate on the top. It has the directions, it has two felting needles. And then this was all I had left. Actually, that wasn't even part of it, but I didn't have much left, which was fine. That's, that's the way it's supposed to be. But I will say, I thought the directions weren't the best and I was disappointed because Going Gnome has such a great reputation, but here they are. And this little thing is very small. The photos are about an inch, an inch by maybe an inch and a quarter. They're very small. There's a lot of black and gray in this penguin and the background is black. There are some photos that it's very difficult to see what's happening, but and the other thing is, it'll say bodies, photo one. Sometimes you're flipping around quite a lot on this little trifold. I would rather just have a straight piece of paper and have little larger photos. But that being said, they turned out really good. And I think partly, I had watched quite a few YouTube tutorials. I don't think there's a craftsy class on this yet. I haven't looked extensively, but I'm really happy with my little penguins and I'm ready to move on to gnomes, I think. I ordered, of course, as one does, I ordered, I didn't even bring that up, but I got a lot of supplies. <laughs> I could probably make quite a few felted items with that, with those things. But the one thing I got that I'm super excited about, oh, here are the kits, the going gnome postcard kits. I, I'm tempted to order one of their gnome kits, although I did feel that the directions weren't that great, but maybe I'll give them some constructive criticism. Okay, so I ordered from Halcyon, which I've ordered yarn, and I've been to the Halcyon in, uh, yarn in 
Bath, Maine. But they had this book, The Gnome Project, by Jessica Peel or Pyle Mining House. One Woman's Wild and Woolly Adventure, The Gnome Project. How to make your own gnome. So there are directions in here. This woman is a fiber artist and slash artist in who lives in Maine. She wrote this book. It's actually, she did a blog. She has a blog. I cannot think of the name of the blog. It's the moon something. She had never been able to complete a pro, uh, something that she was supposed to do every day or she, she just fell down and couldn't continue. So she decided she was going to needle felt a gnome every day for a year and she chronicled it on her blog and this book is the result of it. It has loads of photos. I think most of the 350 or so gnomes are pictured in here and it's very easy to read. It's sort of one of these puffy bindings and I think that, well I did look on Amazon after I bought it from, Harm, from um, Halcyon and I, it wasn't available elsewhere so I don't know if it's just a locally published book does have an ISBN on it. So anyway, I really am glad that I bought it along with some roving that I can use on needle felting to make my gnome village, of course. Who doesn't want one of those? And then the other book that I think of all the books I've purchased so far and looked at, I, I think I'm most impressed with her book and then Wool Buddies. I purchased some kits, some Wool Buddy kits at Stitches one year. I purchased two of them, a frog and a, I can't remember the other thing, an owl, frog and an owl. And they were called, they were from, it said Wool Buddy on there, 20 Irresistibly Simple Needle Felting Projects. I think the directions in here are great. And this woman was a let me get it right here. I, I was impressed with her credentials. <laughs> she was a 3D story artist on the television series Star Wars The Clone Wars. So all of her, all of the projects in this book have a similar look to them and they start with a real basic shape. So I think that they're not too difficult and they progress from easier to, to the more difficult. I think the last one in here is a giraffe maybe, I don't know, but they're very cute. And each animal has a story with it and a name for the animal. Those will be fun to do. <laughs> of course, I had to look at Joanne Fabrics as well. One of the things about Joanne Fabrics, and I, this one's called The Natural World of Needle Felting, Learn How to Make More Than 20 Adorable Animals. I've noticed that their book selection they sometimes have books that come from the UK that are not generally available in the US. So I purchased this one and although I think it's pretty, it's definitely up a level or two or three from beginner, I think, but the directions are good and with a coupon <laughs> joint fabrics, you can get them pretty reasonable and I've enjoyed looking at it, but I don't think it would be one of my main go-to books. It's by Fee Oberon. Okay, so you'll be seeing more probably about that. I don't expect a whole lot, but I found that I do actually like that process of needle felting. I like that satisfying little sound that it makes when you punch the needle in. So we'll see how far it goes. Then a couple other books that I'll just show you. I'm still in the back of my head wanting to make the sewn felt animals, and I do have quite a lot of quite a lot of felted wool, wool felt. My sister had bought this, and this was also Joanne Fabric. But when I went there originally, I couldn't, I, I, I didn't find it. This is a kit. It's called Felt Friends Woodland Critters. So there's a little book. It shows you how to make each animal. I think there are 20, 20 in here. And then there are templates for them. The templates are really small and the materials are not good at all. You wouldn't want to use this, I don't think, because it's not wool felt. And there's embroidery floss and filler in here, but the main thing is the little book. And again, if you 
have a Joanne Fabric coupon, you can get this for pretty reasonable. My sister made all of the ones in the book, and she brought them up in a wooden bowl that our dad had made. They're so charming and all together in a bowl. Oh, you just look through it. They're so cute. So I might, I want to do those too. I don't know what this is about these animals. Maybe it's the fact that I have two little granddaughters, but I don't think that I'm going to give them all of these. I might keep these, most of them, at my house for them to play with when they visit, which isn't going to be very often, but still. So the, the patterns come on cards, and you can punch out the pieces. But my sister did enlarge the pieces. I think she said by 25%, which I will probably do too, because it seems like they would be quite small the parts. You have to allow for turning the edges and all that kind of thing. So that is, we can, we can all blame this felt animal thing on Angie because she's the one that got both me and my sister. She got me going on the felt animals and then I got my sister going. Here's another book I purchased, Super Cute Felt Animals, 35 Delightfully Dainty Projects to Stitch by Laura Howard. These are, these are good ones too. They're they go, they're grouped by barnyard in the sea, so they have more than the woodland ones. Okay, <laughs> that's all the needle felting and wool felting, I think, that I have for now. So we'll move on to quilting now, and I'm gonna regroup and bring up some of my quilts. Everything doesn't fit up here on my table, so I'll do that now. When I went down to get the quilts, I found my shawl. This is the yarn, the Barocco Remix Light, and this is the yarn that was used in this sample. We do have a knit along going in the Knitting Pipeline group, and I have it broken down into one week assignments. I haven't started mine yet, so I need to do that, but here's the design. It's an asymmetrical triangle with some lace at the end, and I'm really liking the asymmetrical triangle idea. I designed this, uh, well, it was in the early summer. And so that is Skagen, or Skagen shawl. One more wool thing that I'll show you. I purchased this from Yarn Geek Fibers at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat because it's just plain, it's um, undyed BFL for needle felting. I thought having a nice quantity of just a plain one would be good because you can make the core of the item any color you want. And of course, a neutral is a little bit better in case, well, I just think it's better. Sometimes people use polyester fiber fill for the metal, but I don't want to do that. I just rather use wool. So. I purchased that and it's, it feels really good and I think it'll felt up well. If you get into needle felting and you, you're purchasing, you really should try to get wool batting as opposed to roving because the roving, the, the fibers are, are straightened out, lining up the same way, whereas batting, they're not as much that way. So they'll felt a little easier. But from Halcyon, I did get they said it was good for needle felting, but it looks pretty much straightened out. So I'll probably, I'll use it. I'll just kind of fluff it up with my hands and it'll work out fine. So quilting, let's talk about the quilts I've made. I've been pretty busy. I got, in the mood to make baby quilts. I'm not always in that mood, so I just got going on it and made several. This was the first, no, that's not the first one. This is the first one I made. I think I showed you, I did, I showed you the top of this one, but I had not yet done the backing. And what I did differently was I added this cornerstone in the polka dot, black and white polka dot. I was going for a gender friendly, gender neutral, and I think I pulled it off because these reproduction fabrics tend to be 
more feminine, I think, as we generally think of it. I know that, I just, I mean, why flowers are considered for girls, I don't know. But what I did, the only color I did not include here is pink. Everything else I included, let me move that so it doesn't keep making noise. And then I think the polka dot border in the, it's, it's kind of a reddish orange. And then these black and white polka dot cornerstones sort of neutralize the, the design. The backing, I actually purchased for another quilt and it's a navy background. It has these little stars and I don't know if it was a winter thing or not, but I got it from Craftsy and it was supposed to actually be the backing for that indigo quilt that I made for my kids for Christmas, but it turned out pretty good. This. The only thing is that it's rather small. This one will be going to Denmark. And I'll make a patch for the back with the baby's name and everything before I send it off. But the pattern is in this book, Three Times the Charm. It's a leisure arts, turning it so the glare is a little better. The title of this one, I think, is Dora. Yes, it's Dora. However, it is only 30 by 30, 30 and a half by 30. My sister said that she heard or was taught in a class that she took that a baby quilt should be at least 36 by 36. And I tend to agree. I mean, I'm sure that people would use that quilt, but it just looks small to me. It might be good for throwing over a car seat or a stroller, but the next one, I did another Dora. This one's a little bit bigger. I added an extra row on the bottom of this one. And again, I put in the corner blocks. I had the, the red and white or cream striped border. And then it's a little bigger. I can't remember the measurements. I forgot to bring my book up here, but I just added one row on the bottom. So it's rectangular instead of square. This one, I already made the patch. I have a little more to do on it. It's here. And it has her name, I embroidered her name on it. And then I've shown it to the mother and she wants the birth date of the child on there. So this is my tip here that if you're, this kind of looks like the flag of Switzerland or something from a distance, but when you're making a quilt and I do like to do these, these personalized things on the back for the person that's getting it. I always make extra blocks and I usually have some mistake blocks. I have blocks that turn out a little small. In this case, I accidentally cut this one a little small, but it was perfect for a patch. So I embroidered her first name, Elizabeth on here. I'm going to put her birth date on and then sew the patch on and take it to them. So I wanted to be sure to show it to you. The, this is actually a mixture of reproduction fabrics that I purchased. Some of them, a lot of them were, jelly rolls. There were some that I had this blue. I had the border I had as a backing on another quilt. And this one has the same navy blue on the, as on the other one. And that's the second one. And then the third one, I went back. I got a duck all the way to the floor this time. I went back to the quilt that I made for my granddaughter for her birth, the, the second granddaughter. And that is in the same book. It is called Fiona. It's actually the cover. Yeah, it's the cover one in Three Times the Charm. This is a book by Leisure Arts. As I mentioned last time, one of the things this book does not do is tell you how, how your blocks are supposed to be squared up, what the final block size is. It's not hard to figure out, but it doesn't tell you to square up the blocks either. So if you're beginning quilter, the projects are pretty good for that, except they don't, they don't tell you that. So just be aware of it. It's necessary to do, or your thing is going to end up probably wonky. So also I use two and a half inch strips. I went through my books and I write down jelly roll friendly. If it is jelly roll 
friendly. And the way you can tell is that they took a charm pack and then they cut the charm pack in or each square of the charm pack into two and a half inch squares. They divide it down the middle and, and across. But a jelly roll is two and a half inch strips. So when you know that, then you can, well, I'll just use a jelly roll. So it's a good thing to know your sizes on those pre-cut things. This one I am pretty much in love with. And I knew it was going to a girl, so there is some pink in it. It's not as gender neutral. I love this fabric. I bought this fabric when my sister and I were in Minnesota last June for a little mini reunion with her family. And we went to, oh, and I'm not gonna be able to think of the name of the shop. If I can't remember it, I'll put it here. But it's where Nancy, my finisher, <laughs> quilter friend, works. Uh, anyway, I, I can picture exactly where it was. Craft Quilt Co. That's it, Quilt Co. So that's where I got that. Sometimes I look for fabrics that'll be really good. What, what do you call it? They'll kind of tie in. So this one had red, blue, yellow, and circles, and it was a good tie-in. The bird fabric I already had. I was That was another thing. I was really determined on these quilts to use things that were already in my fabric stash. And that was a good exercise, really, to do. Because it forced me to dig into some of my bags of leftovers from different projects and it stretched me a little bit. I don't think I would have thought to use this gray in here, but it turned out perfectly. I did the black and white binding. The backing is something I had on hand. I had to piece this backing, but that was okay. It's flannel. It is white background with pink polka dots. Let's see what else. Oh, Okay, the previous two quilts I showed you, I did free motion quilting. I've been trying to make the quilts so they're a little bit more, a little bit softer. And I think that my free motion quilting, although I try to open it up and make it bigger, it, it's kind of like handwriting. It, for me, it's hard to change it. So on this one, I decided to do some minimal straight line quilting. And I think I'll do more of that in the future. All I did was diagonals across the nine patches and then just down the seams here so there's it's around the on point blocks and I think it's perfect it's just the right amount of quilting and I just stitched in the ditch on the borders this one has a border at the top an extra border at the top and bottom which I like and yeah here I can <laughs> I just noticed that the Batting is a little bit bunched up there. I've never had that happen before that I'm aware of, but anyway, that's the way it is. I think I actually pieced the batting on one, in one place. That might be why. Oh, don't you love this little rabbit? I did a fussy cut rabbit there. This one is going to be, this one's going to be mailed off for a one year birthday. I never did anything for the birth of this child and so I decided to make a gift for her one year birthday which is a big deal and okay so she has a block that I'm going to put on the back and it has I embroidered her full name on it and I've been taking a Craftsy class my husband and I signed up for Craftsy Unlimited and I've sort of gone wild with that and this it really improved my embroidery it's the one by Jessica Marquez Marquez, I think is her name, and I used a new little uh, embroidery technique on this border. It's where you do a running stitch and then you weave in and out in a different color, and I did some, I just did some different things on it and had fun with it. Then I'm going to put this patch on the back and then it'll be ready to go. Now this is another example of this block was too big. I thought I knew I thought I knew what size this this square was supposed to be so I had a five inch square and I made the on point block and then when I looked at the nine patches and was going to square this up to the same size I realized that it was way too big no way too big it was a half an inch too big all around 
So I thought, well, I can use that for the patch. So it turned out really cute. Now, I want to tell you about a tool that I purchased because I don't have the plastic off of it yet, but I purchased two of these because sometimes you run across a block like this one that when I went to square it up, I could not figure out how to square it up. This happened when I made the first quilt with this on point block. And I can't entirely explain to you why it's difficult, but when you're trying to center this point and this point and this point and this point and make them in the center of the block, using a traditional square up ruler is not enough. So I called my friend Val and went over to her house. She said, come on over. She'd help me. She's more experienced than I am. And when she looked at it, she said, oh, well, you can use this. And it was, I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the package now, but it's called a square it up and fussy cut ruler. She loaned it to me and I purchased one the exact size she had, which was six and a half. And then I got an eight and a half as well. So I recommend that you get one of these because you don't know when you're going to need it. And you could always use it for regular squaring up as well. But for fussy cutting, which is when like on this rabbit, of course it's not visible here, but on that little rabbit square, you can cut and make sure that a flower or a character is right in the middle of that square. So I recommend getting this and having it on hand. So when you need it, you have it. And that's the Creative Grids. There's probably other brands that have it too, Fonz and Porter and Omni Grid, but this is the one that, that Val had and I decided to get too. All right, well, those are all the finished. Well, there's one other finished quilt downstairs, but I think that's enough for <laughs> for today but I have some things I'm going to show you let me look around all right this blew me away and I don't usually show things that people send me kind of as gifts or whatever but sometimes I do but anyway this is from Jean and she said she had made these quilts and had these museum fabrics that if I wanted them she would send them to me reproduction fabrics when I opened this box, it was absolutely, well, she had a sweet note in there, but she had this tissue paper on top. Sorry for the crinkling, I'll put it down and that'll be it for that. So I took the tissue paper off. I, I was absolutely stunned. First of all, there's a lot of fabric in here. It's all folded beautifully and ironed and there was some nice tea, which now that I've shown you, I can get into. Uh, this piece of fabric, which says the Rising Sun Smithsonian Institution by RJR Fashion Fabrics. So these, these are absolutely gorgeous. I can't remember now. Sorry, Jean. I can't remember the other museum that you told me they were, but there's, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see, but the quality and detail on these prints is just amazing and a little intimidating to be quite honest because I don't want to just do anything but there's there's several quilts in here so I'm not going to use it yet for miniatures because I'll make a bigger quilt or two or three and then the leftovers I can use for miniatures and she also sent the little these are embroidered machine embroidered tags for the quilts that this was designed for, the groom's quilt. I did find that, I think somewhere, and she sent me links to some of these too. The Rising Sun collection, and then Little Sister's Quilt, and those you can find online as well. So, Jean, thank you so much. This is just one of the most amazing things. And I called, Val and she came over and looked at them and then I showed my friend Joan who she's a hand quilter and she does she does very intricate quilts so really really a sweet thing for you to do all right and then a couple of things that I've added to my fabric row let's see oh yeah
sorry, maybe I can edit some of this out, but I did order more of the striped fabric because I'm afraid they're going to stop making it and I won't be able to get it. I got it in the red and the black. It's just, I love the stripes. It's just amazing. And when I was ordering that, I got this from Sew Me a Song on Etsy. I saw this and said, okay, I have to have some of that too. I could see that being in one of those on point blocks. You could put a square of this I don't know, it looks, it's children playing in a woodland with deer and rabbit, bear. I mean, what's not to love about that? And just the soft muted colors. Plus it's, I think it's double gauze or something different. It's, it's a lot softer than regular quilter's cotton. So I ordered, I think this came from Missouri Star Quilt Company, another reproduction one, it's Storybook Sleepy Time. These are so sweet, little sheep, different colors and I think this is maybe a little more gender neutral there's some pinks in here but overall I think 75% of these or more could be used in a gender friendly quilt and then I got that's by Wyndham Fabrics and then this is Robert Kaufman Charm Square this is called what's it called Dolly Jean there we go it's by probably Darlene yeah Darlene Zimmerman she does most of the ones for the reproduction for Robert Kaufman. So those are the gateway uh, into quilting for me because I started picking up charm packs before I ever knew what I was going to do with them. And that's how I fell in love with quilting this third time around for me. I have this in here as a little reminder. I've been using flannel for, as you saw, that quilt backing and one coming up. If you are shopping and you see flannel quilts, flannel sheet sets on clearance. They're a great deal. Now, some people say, oh, don't use sheets. Well, I agree. You don't want to use worn sheets as backing for, for uh, quilts. However, if you can get 100% cotton sheets in a high thread count, it's just as good. I don't care what they say. You don't have to piece it. You get a full size quilt or queen size you don't have to piece it. The quality is really good. So I got a plain white flannel sheet set at Kohl's. I got full size. I don't know why I didn't spring for the queen, but full was, was good enough. And then the bottom sheet, you just cut the elastic off. I used it on the backing and actually for the batting on an upcoming quilt that you'll see. So that's why I have this in here to remind me. And then when you have these scraps like this, they could be used for tying up a package or tying up a quilt. I have some down there that I might just use as dust cloths because I'm not sure. They're just strips of or pe odd pieces of flannel that I don't think I'll ever do. A, well, I don't know. <laughs> I better not say that. So connecting threads, you've heard me talk about that. They came out with a Liberty fabric, Liberty of London fabric line. And yeah, I bought it. These are, I think these are half yards. They look like it or fat eights. I'm not sure which, I think they're half yards and they're all the beautiful florals. I don't know what kind of a quilt I'll make or what pattern, I don't know, but I couldn't resist buying it and I love looking at that's the same no it's not it's got a little different coloring in it just absolutely stunning fabrics I've been happy with the quality from connecting threads which is like the knit picks version which is like the quilters version of knit picks it's it's the same company but it's called connecting threads um, I don't buy that much yet from them and I do still like buying from my local shops and I do quite a bit of that actually. My sister told me when we were up at Quilt Cove, she was, she said, have you ever had these quilting pins, the fine quilting pins? She said they're, they were better. They're not flathead, they have a bead on them. So I bought these when I ordered, I think when I ordered, I, they were not at my local shop and they were about $10. So it seems like a lot for a little thing of pins. My sister said that they're really better and that's all I have to hear <laughs> off buying the thing, but I'm all about good tools. So 
I bought a set and I think I'll start switching over to those in my, my quilting. Here, let me look in my box or basket here. That looks like it for now. So I probably am going to have to piece all this together, but thank you so much for spending time with me. I really appreciate your time and hope that you come back. And if you don't mind subscribing to the channel, that way when a new episode comes up, since they're not that frequent, then you will be notified. It will come up in your subscriptions. And if you can click the thumbs up, that also helps the podcast quite a bit. I enjoy your questions and feedback, which you can leave below. So thank you so much again. And I will probably have some photos in here. Oh, I forgot something. There's also a little bit of vlogging where I just talked through some things I was doing with the quilts downstairs. It's mostly quilting because knitting doesn't really lend itself very well. Maybe I'll have to think about that a little bit more and I might be able to get more knitting because I still, still love knitting, so don't worry. It's not going away. Anyway, I'll have a little of that and maybe some photos at the end for you to enjoy. Thanks again. Bye-bye. I'm in my kitchen now. I've done most of the editing for the show. However, I didn't realize how many tips I included in the quilting blog. So if you are a quilter, you might want to stay tuned for that. And then at the end, there is some bird footage, sort of like you saw at the beginning, but I narrate it. So I'll insert this so that you know what's ahead. I've been doing some organizing. And working on the Lone Star quilt, I thought of, well, I was trying to use fabric that I had. Typically, when I've finished a project, I put all the, <laughs> I put all the pieces in a bag and forget about them, pretty much. Sometimes I even iron everything very neatly, but when they're in these bags, they just get messed up. And I had a whole drawer full of bags like this. So I've been going through them and organizing them a little bit more so I can see what I have. And I've taken, we have a lot of these old, they've been used in our tax files and stuff like that. So I take these file folders and I cut them down a little bit. And I've been using them to, sorry for the rest of my mouth. Here's, here's a bag I'm going to start working on. This, these were two quilts I made. And I had all these William Morris fabrics and other things in here. And it's, it's really pretty much a mess. So for the, the long strips, I don't know if I, I hope I'm in the frame here. I tried to center it on. So I'm taking the what would be like cardboard and then winding these around that and then pinning it with pins that I'm not that are I'm not using much anymore and that way when they're in the bags they're going to be flat and not get as wrinkled here's <laughs> you're gonna have you're gonna have leftovers whatever you do. And I love this fabric. I used it on the back of one of the William Morris fabric quilts and really like it. Here are some, some extra blocks from that. So the other thing I've decided to do is to make a quilt as you go using leftovers from all my previous quilts. I may only make one block per quilt and it'll probably not look that good together but it'll be meaningful to me because I'll have those. See, I have all this fabric left plus this. And then I have a whole uh, layer cake of the William Morris fabric. So I have more than enough for an extra quilt here. I love the fabric so much that I bought it <laughs> several times. <laughs> so we'll see. I don't know. I am, I am a little tired of it, but it's, that's beginning to wane. 
So again, here's a package that I've already done of this gorgeous, I like this fabric so much. It's one of the cutest baby quilts, I think. It has the bears on it. And it's not perfect. I mean, these will still need ironing and pressing when they come out, but they sure are better like that than they are like this. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm going to be out of the photo in a minute anyway, but I'm going to show you some of the quilts I've been working on. I realize that these quilts need to go off to their new homes here soon. This quilt is from one of the books, Three Times the Charm. I think it's called Fiona. Well, anyway, if <laughs> you need to know, you can ask me. It's the same one I made for my granddaughter. I used reproduction fabrics and I didn't make any modifications except I added in these corner stones in the polka dot. And then I love, you'll see this on <laughs> other quilts. I like this black and white border. The backing is pink. Well, it's white background with pink tiny polka dots. And I am really liking minimal quilting. I only did diagonals here and then just stitching the ditch around these. And I like the puffiness of the quilt. I think I'm gonna do that more. You'll see on the next two quilts differently, but I did them before. There's a cute little bunny fabric here. I tried to choose fabrics that were, that had some black in them actually, so they would pick up the black in the border a little bit. And I'm really excited about it. This is the tag that I'm going to be putting on the back before I send it off and I embroidered her name, Winona Rose, isn't that adorable? And used I used a block that was too big because I didn't look at the directions and I made the first block and realized it was too big. And maybe I'll talk a little bit more about the embroidery when I sit down and talk to you about it, but there you can get a good view of the quilt. And these are all 1930s reproduction fabrics that I've used in this one. And then the other two reproduction ones, let's see if we can get them in the frame here. Well, you can't see all of it, so I'll have to lift it up. But this one's not going away soon, but this one is. This one is also from the book, Three Times the Charm, but it's, it's a little small. I did all over free motion on this. I don't think I'm doing that so much anymore. And then I put the cornerstones on and the red and white striped border. This one has a patch that I've done everything except sew it on. And it has my quilting tag. And again, that is a patch that I cut too small. It was a little off, but then you can use those for, for something else. These quilts, when I first started them, I didn't know where they were going. And so I tried to choose more gender neutral colors. There's no pink in this one or this one. So I think they can go for just about anybody. And then the back is navy blue with white. It's actually, I think, kind of in a Civil War. I don't remember, but I got it for the backing of a different quilt. and. So those are the reproduction fabric baby quilts that I've done recently. And then I'll be showing you another baby quilt later on. Well, I just thought of another tip that I could give you regarding this Lone Star quilt. I was going for a low volume and I didn't have enough of these have enough of these low volume kind of they're not solids but they read like a solid when you're away from it and originally this one here looked about the same value as this one and it was just a little too much dark on that one end of the quilt so I just flipped that one to the wrong side and I really like it I didn't have any more of that color 
it only had one square of each color. So if we get real close, you might be able to see that it is actually the wrong side of that, but I liked it better than the darker side. So see, it's kind of similar to this one. Nobody, I think, would realize that that is actually the wrong side of the fabric. So I'll step back so you can see. This was not my idea. I, I saw this somewhere in a tutorial to remember that you can use the wrong side of the fabric if the wrong side works better. This is, it's about four o'clock. This is a time of day when the birds get very busy to fuel up for the night. We have quite a few cardinals out there, probably. I'm looking out in the trees where you can't really see them. They're a little bit too far back. You might be able to. There's one. The females don't show up very well, but there's a female up above the male. And there are several on the ground down here. Try not to make you dizzy. Yeah, so they're fueling up for the night ahead. Okay, right now there are a few more that flew in. I'm going to count one, two, three. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'd say about 10 to 12 out there right now. Yeah, that's a conservative guess because I see a few more. Anyway, there's a couple up on the branches here. Another male over there, and then the ones that are further out. They're a most amazing bird and quite striking, as you can see. Hey, 